When you're first learning how to edit video, there is an awful lot to learn and it can be quite intimidating. There is so much to it, whether it's learning different types of cut, J cut, L cut, jump cut, different audio techniques, different effects, color grading, or even just learning how to tell a story within your edit. And when you are learning all of these things, you want your videos to look as professional and as good as they possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. And keyframes are one area within video editing that you can help to take a video from looking okay to looking really good and professional. But keyframes can also be very daunting to learn about, especially if you've never used them before, but they don't have to be. So in a minute, I'm gonna jump into Final Cut Pro and my MacBook sat here, and we're gonna take a quick look at how you can learn to use keyframes to help elevate your videos to the next level. Now, I do use Final Cut Pro to edit my video. However, keyframes work pretty much the same in every video editing software, no matter which one you use, whether it's Premiere, Da Vinci or something else entirely. The only thing that is different with keyframes is the way you actually put them into the timeline and onto your specific clips might differ slightly to how it happens in Final Cut Pro. So let's look at how we can use keyframes to improve the quality of your videos. Very quickly, just before we go any further, if you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of video, photography, tech, creativity related videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community. So here we are inside Final Cut Pro and you can see I've already imported some things onto the timeline. So I have one bit of talking head footage. I have a drone shot. A little bit of music as well because you can use keyframes within your audio and I also have a base correction here that I use for my color grading which we'll talk about as well but that is out of the way for now I've clicked V on my timeline so that is hiding it. So let's start with just talking about what a keyframe is and a keyframe is essentially a marker on your clip or your timeline telling the video editing software where things need to be at that specific time. So in Final Cut Pro, you can add a keyframe over here in your inspector by clicking these little diamonds with a cross inside and they turn yellow when you've selected them. So you can do position, rotation, scale, and all of these different things. Let's start with a very basic one on this talking head clip. And you can see that it is a static shot. It's on a tripod. There's no movement at all apart from who is talking on camera. So we wanna just add in a little zoom into this piece because maybe the person talking on camera is saying something that you would really want the viewer to focus on so you want to slowly crop in to closer to their face. So we're going to do that just by selecting where we want the keyframe to start. So I'm going to leave it static up until around about here. If you were doing this properly you'd focus on what the person was saying. Here I'm just using a silent clip just to show you how you can easily add keyframes. So I'm going to select this part of the clip and I'm gonna go back over to the inspector and I'm gonna choose scale. And then I'm gonna to go to where I want the keyframe to stop. So this might be where the person stops talking or where your clip ends. But for this part of the example, I'm just gonna put it around about here. Select the clip. And then all I want to do is slide up the scale to where I want it to zoom into. So then if we go back to the start of the keyframe, you can see that it is now slowly zooming in and it will finish zooming in where we set that last keyframe. It is as easy as that to add in a slight zoom. However, one thing that you might notice is we are now cutting off the top of the speaker's head. So we might want to go back and add in another keyframe for the position so it zooms in and up towards the speaker's head. Now in Final Cut Pro, you can click Control and V and it will show you exactly where those keyframes are. So you can see that these two diamonds are showing where the keyframes are. That means that we can then select that exact position again and add in another keyframe for the position. And if we do the same for this one, we can then move it up or to the side and move it up as well. So we can position the frame where we want it at the exact time as the other keyframes start as well. And then as you can see, 
this is now slowly zooming in and up towards the speaker's head. And it just makes that shot look a little bit more dynamic. It looks a little bit more interesting. And then as it reaches that last keyframe, it stops zooming in. If you want to hide all of your animations that are showing inside Final Cut Pro again on that clip, all you have to do is again click Control V and you go back to your normal timeline. So let's go over to this drone clip and maybe we want to do something similar. This is just a very boring, slow drone clip. There's not a lot happening with it. It's a nice looking shot, but we could make it look a little bit more interesting. So what we're going to do with this clip is I'm going to start it at the start of the clip and I'm going to add one into rotation and I'm going to rotate the clip just like that. But as you can see, we now have these black bars that have appeared around the edge because we've rotated the clip and it's now not filling the frame. So I'm going to zoom in just to fill the frame and I'm going to add a keyframe there on the scale as well. But then I'm going to go all the way through to the end of the clip. And obviously this clip doesn't look straight at all because we rotated it. But at this final frame of the clip, now selected, I'm going to go back to zero on rotation. And then I'm going to go back to 100 on the scale as well. And then if we go back to the start of the clip and click play, you can see instantly that clip looks just a little bit more interesting and more dynamic. There's a lot more happening within the clip. There is also a little bit of a zoom out as well, which is only very subtle, but it just makes it look a little bit more interesting because the drone is flying towards the subject, in this case, the farm, and the picture or the clip is zooming out. But then we add in the rotation back in, and it almost looks a little bit like an FPV drone shot, although not quite the same because it was shot on the DJI Mini 2, but it looks along those sorts of lines. It looks a lot more interesting. So that's just a couple of things you can do with keyframes on video clips. You can also use them on audio clips. So for example, if you wanted to do a little bit of a fade out, this clip sounds like this at the moment. Very simple acoustic guitar, and we want to add in a little bit of a fade out. So I'm gonna choose where I want it to start fading, and I'm gonna to go to the volume, click keyframe, go to the end, and maybe turn it down just like that. And you can see we've added in a little bit of a fade. and it fades all the way out just like that. So it's nice and easy to add in different audio techniques as well. And you can also use it for color grades. Let's say we want to add in a LUT. And I'm gonna just very quickly choose a Peter McKinnon LUT. And obviously you'd never use it at 100%. You may use it around about here. And maybe you don't want to use this color at the start of the clip. Maybe you want to fade it in because you're doing something a little bit more creative. I'm gonna just go all the way off at the start of the clip. And then I'm gonna click the keyframe. So that keyframe is saying that the clip at that point is having none of this color grade on top. And then I'm just gonna to go to here, which is nice and close. And I'm gonna to go to around about, let's just go extreme. Let's just show it at its most extreme just to show what it can do. And then we click play. And you can see that that color nicely fades in. And then we've also got the added zoom in keyframes that we added in before as well. And it just makes that clip look a little bit more interesting. So over here, we've got the original clip colors and then it fades to the lot that we used. And again, we wouldn't use it this extreme. I just did it like this to show you what you can do but just go and have fun with them. Use keyframes to help elevate your videos to the next level because you really can do some incredible things with keyframes. Just be creative and let your mind go wild with them. <laughs> let your mind go wild with them. Anyway, just go and have fun with keyframes, do a little bit of experimenting and try and improve your video next time you make a new video using keyframes. So if you like what you see in this channel, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community. And I shall see you in the next video.